Hello everyone and welcome to Culture of Gaming's Power Up Podcast, episode 110, being recorded live on March 28th, 2020. I'm your host, Taylor, and this week I'm of course joined by Anthony. How are you? I'm uh, doing pretty well. Uh, not got sick yet, so that's a that's a plus. Um, went out for one of the first times yesterday in quite some time. Oh. Um, because we don't technically have a lockdown where I am, but uh, it's still like dissuaded in a sense like you're not supposed to go out anywhere strongly um, encouraged exactly <laughs> strongly encouraged to stay at home yeah. um so went out it's very quiet it was like voting day yesterday here um which in my opinion should have been called off but whatever uh so pretty quiet um actually but like some shopping areas are really busy but aside from that like the freeway and everything's really quiet oh, yeah. um so but yeah went out and got some shopping whatever yesterday as part, apart from that, I haven't really been doing a whole heap, just working on the site and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as what I've been playing, some Doom Eternal, obviously. Um, read up my review for that. That should be going live shortly. Somebody is currently editing it at the moment, so that nice. should go live. Is it the next? Uh, you cut out. Really? Yeah. During the next, Somebody what? Half hour or so. Okay, so if we, because uh, as some of you might know, uh, part of our intro segment is kind of the weekly site recap. So if it goes up uh, during the time that we uh, are doing that, then we will cover it also. Anyway. Sure. Um, I gave it a 9.5 anyway, so oh, I quite okay. enjoyed the game. Um, it's, as, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing bad about it. Uh, I have spoken about Doom uh, for the past couple of weeks, so I won't go into too much of it. You can read my review over on culturegaming.com. You cut out again. Nothing. All right. Do you want? Do you want? Hold my on. issues. I'm gonna change the Discord server. Hello. Hello. I don't understand this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's... It'll get there. Yeah. Um, I turned my gain up a little bit, so hopefully that fixes it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so. The hell yeah, you that's did. Think. <laughs> I need to turn you what down do you now. <laughs> Okay. Okay, we're good. Well, we're good. I need to, I needed to detect my voice. So yeah. Um. So aside from that, I've been playing some Animal Crossing as well, New Horizons, of course. Um. So doing that on the grind, uh, just building houses and building bridges and uh, no walls being built yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you build everything else in that game, so whatever. Um. Aside from that, that's kind of it for me. I have also haven't really been playing Modern Warfare too much. I need to jump back into that because I've been focusing on Doom yeah. for the review. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it for me. I haven't really been PS4 gaming or anything. Um, but yeah. Okay. Andrew, yeah. what have you been up to? Hello. Yes. Uh, game-wise, uh, still Animal Crossing. I'm checking with that like daily. Uh, it's fun to like do your little like errands. Like, I don't know. Yeah, sure. That game. It's so weird. Anthony, are you time traveling at all in that game? Are you like no. messing with them? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I did once. It didn't do anything for me. I like um, think about it. I'm like, should I just do that? But then it's too it, much effort. It doesn't work. I don't reckon. Like, oh, okay. I did it. So I changed my time from like AUD time to like Denver time or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So it shot it ahead a good, or shot it, actually shot it backwards. Backwards. Yeah. Um, so that's probably why it didn't work. <laughs> I can't really go any more say, forward. You, I was going to say, you can't really go forward from where you're at. Yeah. Can't you just change the day? Or is you No, is it's got to be off the system. So uh, it can't have... be in the game. It's got to be on the system. Right. You, I think you can go into your system settings, change the day. Oh, uh, okay. I did it wrong. <laughs> I did it wrong. But yeah, so it might work. But, um, I thought, I, yeah. I thought, like, if, even if I shot it back tonight, it might, like, re, mm, respawn, okay. like, the rock sort of, but, yeah, whatever. Oh, that's a good point. Mm, yeah. Good. Work. Yeah, because I, yeah, I was going to a point where I'm like, man, I have to get, like, 30 of these ore things. Oh, and, no. Like, and there's so many little tricks those games that they don't tell you. So, like, looking online definitely helps. Look up some guys if you're, like, struggling. We uh we've actually done a guide that is waiting oh. to be edited for oh, Animal Crossing. We'll write that up, so that should also be going live within the next couple of minutes or so. So you can check that out if you want it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So it's very helpful to to know like oh dig a hole behind you so you can hit the rock. 
eight times. You know, it's just weird stuff that I sure. never knew. That game's sure. fun. I got a fox living on my island now. Nice. Um, I'm slowly building my like dad pad. I've got like a barbecue yeah. in the front. I've got a smoker. <laughs> got my oh, like, nice. lawn chairs up and everything. So wow, very nice. Excited about that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that stuff. No, that's, um, that's yeah, so that's that's a fun little game. Um, and then I finally got to jump into some battle. No. Warzone. There it Warzone. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Okay. Some Warzone. Yeah. Um, I did. I did play with a team with my friends. Um, and I think that game is very fun. I don't know why you guys okay. are not super hot on it. But... I only played like one game, and it was just like me, a, like one other friend, and the random. And my friend mm -hmm. that I queued up with hates battle royale. So probably, oh, okay. probably got a little bit miffed, um, sure. you know, in the experience. Of course so, he did. Yeah. If I had, just, uh, I, I, yeah. If I had more time, I might have like tried it on my own here. Sure. I only played like a handful of games, probably like five or six. But like, I don't know. It's super hectic, and like, I'm not taking it seriously. Maybe that's helping. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to have fun instead of like trying to win, like sure. and being aggressive. Like that's what I really like about that 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 game is you can like be really aggressive in it. Yeah. Um, they give you the tools, like they give you the UAV, they give you the heartbeat sensor, they give you all these tools that like hunt people down or like the hunted contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's cool because like obviously you can play the game by like hiding and taking your time and you might win or place higher that way. But yeah. I don't know, it's more fun just to like just be attacking constantly. Sure. Um, so I think it's fun. And like running people over is hilarious. I don't know. Every time like, I just miss horribly and then die. It's great. What the hell? What have you done? Okay, I'm sorry. So I, I was just briefly, um, I had the DS Racer website pulled up because um, like the armrests on my chair are starting to go out a little bit. Like they're <laughs> starting to fall apart just a little bit. I've had this chair for like five years, by the way. So it's like, it's lasted quite a bit. And it's a great chair. And so I was just, I was looking to see if they sell replacement armrests. They do. Um, it's like 200 bucks. It's like $60 for a pair. Oh, that's not, that's not that bad. Okay, I think it's a little bit of sense. I thought like thirty. I was thinking like, oh, I'll spend like thirty dollars to get replacement armrests, and life will be good again, just like new, right? No. Okay. Anyway, sorry. As you were saying, Andrew. <laughs> no, no, I like Warzone. I think it's fun. Um, I, I think it's cool that's cross-play, so I'm being able to play with some friends like that I haven't played with, like on Call of Duty before, uh, okay. just because it's Xbox or whatever. Um, so, I think you, it's cool. Do you think Warzone really brought that many new people into into it? seem like it said like 3 million play 30 million 3 million there's a number that got put out there okay pretty recently um yeah i saw that okay. and it was uh very high okay mm. i um, haven't followed the news but why do, like lately but why does modern warfare have a like 175 gig patch right now so i don't know what the exact I, the, all the patches are huge that's yeah. all i know yeah but i know when you downloaded this thing warzone was like at least 10 okay. gigabytes oh no 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 that's 80 yeah it's like 80 well i think they make you download the whole game when you download it because okay on my ps4 like mm -hmm. i have the actual game like the multiplayer installed and everything yeah and it was like a quick like 10 minute or like 10 gig download but okay. if you're like downloading it like the free-to-play version i think they make you download mm. the entire client well i i bought i got warzone before i got modern warfare yeah. And when I bought Modern Warfare, I had to download another 80 gigs. Uh, I oh, wow. Yeah, I have no idea how it so works. So I'm not sure about that, but I don't know. Whatever. Oh, maybe they're doing the patch to try and like compress it a bit, maybe, to like, oh, cut down the size. Okay, maybe. There's a bunch of weird stuff. Like, you download that game in like piecemeal. It's really weird. Yeah. Like, you can download the story, download the multiplayer. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I have no idea what... Every time, I swear, I had to like delete something for that game to work. At one point, I had to like delete Call of Duty. I'm like, I have enough space, but it wanted me to have enough space to like reinstall the whole game, which I didn't have. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't have 125. I had like 90 gigs left. Sure. And I was like, well, this patch shouldn't be 90 gigs. And then like, <laughs> it makes it wants you to reinstall the game like all the way over again. So it's oh my it's, goodness. At least on the PS4, it seems. Well, like oh, that's okay. not very. Uh, that's not very. What was that's not very huggies. Of them, that was like the saying before. Um, because they're saying to what? limit like internet, you know, that toilet paper thing that we were joking about a couple of days ago, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just so internet providers are saying don't download massive patches where he's Call of Duty asking you to download the whole game again for like the sixth time, yeah. It's... 
it's yeah. gotta be bad with people with data caps it's not gonna oh, be yeah. Yeah. yeah oh the place i'm moving to has a data cap unless we go up to like a business Ooh. account and so it's like Ooh. we have three people That's who awesome. all have to do online college and then also have like gaming pcs and like consoles too oh yeah, yeah. what's so, the data limit one this? terabyte a month no nice. that's not bad uh, you'll you'll live hmm. i don't know we've been yeah, yeah it seems kind of low right um i mean yeah, that's like standard but i i still find it ridiculous that isps cap data like i can kind of understand cell phone carriers doing it. no not really jk mm -hmm. but uh... like for isps to do it yeah no no sorry Especially when you live in a world where every, like, normie streams 4K HDR Netflix now. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Andrew? Mm, I'm trying to think. No, I, I'm, I kind of want to start something new. I'm like, or, like, old. Like, I'm like, oh, I should probably finish the hero or Resident Evil oh. 2. I just haven't had, like, the gusto to start it up again. Okay. So, hopefully I get to one of those soon. All right. Uh, well, this week for me, um, in case you can't tell, I am currently in the process of moving. Although I have not moved my desk and like PC out of uh, my original place yet, so I'm just in this kind of empty. Wouldn't that be the first thing you move? Huh? I had like no real fragile way to transport it until okay. like later sure. this evening. Just I want to be super sure. duper careful with all this stuff, right? So, just proves you don't care about your gaming PC as much. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, yeah. Uh, Currently in this empty husk of what used to be my room, uh, with random assortment yeah. of crap behind me. Um, yeah. yeah, but uh, earlier this week, um, finished off Ori a bit. Great, great game. Uh, my review's up. Talked a little bit about that in a second. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Been playing Doom Eternal. Just about finished with that game. I'm to the point now where it's like I'm going back to replay and kind of like, I don't want to say 100% complete, but going back through each level and getting all the collectibles, all the uh, challenges completed, mm -hmm. everything, stuff like that. So we're heading into what I'd imagine would be the last little bit of it there. Um, sure. So, yeah, that's about where I stand on that. A uh, little bit of just like general Modern Warfare multiplayer. Game's still good. Um, we might talk a little bit more about that um, when we get to uh, my news topics of the week. Uh, some stuff's been going on in that game, and uh, it might be related to a topic we talked about uh, last week, too. Anyway, that's been about it. Uh, moving, a uh, new place. Going to have the same download speed, uh, much, <laughs> much reduced um, upload speed, and yeah. Nice. I had to put a hole, hole in the wall to run a Coats table yesterday, which is fun. I don't know. It's like this. Um, so it's like um, we're renting a place, right? It's like we paid a $250 cleaning fee, my roommates and I. They didn't clean it before we moved in. So it's like most of the day was on yesterday. It was honestly spent like mopping and sweeping and everything. It was just like really. Yeah, so that like shut okay. the entire day. Uh, but I was going to like keep moving some stuff later at night. But so I basically have to go through... So I'm currently living in one portion of like one uh, city in Arizona. It's all part of the same like metropolitan area, but it's still like city specific too. So I'm currently living in one city in Arizona. Okay, I have to um, travel through the entirety of another one before I hit like the um, border of my, or it's like the uh, city I'm now living in. And, uh, yeah, the city um, that I lived in and I'm currently broadcasting from has a curfew from, like, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. now. And so it's wow. like, okay, there's, like, no way I could go and get another load of stuff without breaking this curfew here. And the fine sure. is, like, $1,000 at the police statue. Ooh. Yikes. So, Dang. Yeah. That's wild. Which kind of brings me to uh, related stuff. I'm... Um, Sure, statistically speaking, uh, we're all under some form of quarantine or lockdown or another, so everyone's still wow. doing okay with that. How are you doing, Andrew? Yeah, we're hanging in here, you know, down here. No one's sick. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sick. Uh, you know, my person I live with isn't sick either, so we're just kind of sheltering, you know, going out for the groceries, yeah. making sure we get yeah. outside a little bit of soccer or rugby or something, you know, in the sure. front yard. So uh, it's been a weird, weird uh, thing. Are you oh. in... Are you in a house or an apartment? I'm in an apartment, but it's like a flat, flat apartment. So there's no, sure. I don't got to go up any stairs or nothing or interact with ele elevators. So. No, I'll tell you what, I'd hate to live in an apartment, like have to, not that, like if it's a singular apartment, that's fine where you yeah. got like a yard bit or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'd hate to live in like a complex where you can't, that'd be yeah. so bad during this, like yeah. not being able to like go outside or anything, that'd be shocking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's not great, but we're getting by. You know, my uh, other stuff, I'm doing all my teaching online now is kind of weird and stuff. So. Yeah, they got you so, on that. Yeah, I'm using Zoom now, teaching somehow teaching gymnastics online. It's weird. Yeah, one of my friends, she's <laughs> but, taking a uh, ballet class this semester, and like she has to do ballet class online. And so it's like yeah. all, all the people in it have like their cameras pointed towards them like on the ground somewhere oh in their house goodness. and they're like doing the exercises yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. She says it's kind of interesting, but it's still fun. So whatever. Yeah, you know, as long as we're engaging the people we're, we're with, it's, it's fine, I guess. So. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Yeah. How about you, Anthony? You doing all right over there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of used to like, as I said, our state that I'm in isn't in like a, it's in a stage one lockdown, which is like, don't go out, don't go but you don't have to go basically people are still working you know stuff's still happening but shops are starting to close now um so like one of our big chains is starting to shut up shop and oh, a no. few other okay. places as well a lot of places have gone bankrupt because of this um which is not good to see a lot of small businesses are struggling like everywhere um yeah. as far as myself i'm kind of used to like i'm i'm an introverted person i would say um i guess i if I'm hanging out with friends or whatever, I don't really prefer my own company, but like if I'm doing my own thing, then I kind of prefer it, if that makes sense. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so I'm used to like going out alone and being on my own and whatever, but yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. So that's good, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my state here in the US is definitely one of the more latter states when it comes to like travel and everything and stuff <laughs> like that. So I'm kind of, I am kind of looking out. The worst thing the state has is uh, the city I was before mentioning having the curfew. But even that's just yeah, that's one specific wild. city and not like the entire metropolitan oh. area. So, yeah, so it's like, um, that's pretty much the worst of it. And yeah, you know, kind of like, uh, Anthony, um, it's like I've been used to like gaming online with friends for years, so it's not too much different. Um, my like close friend circle, which is only like, uh, four or five people or so in real life here, um, or it's like in the state here, it's just like, we've all just been hanging out with each other normally. It's under 10 as per state guidelines. And, um, <laughs> it's like, we know none of us have it. So it's kind of okay. No one's in like a risky position to have it either. So we feel kind of pretty mm -hmm. safe with each other, hanging out, being in person. So it's not, it's not all that bad. Uh, I will say it's, everything being like, closed. it's not spreading here like the U.S. either. Like in my state, it's yes, the numbers are going up, but it's not getting out of control. Hmm. Yeah. Um, which I I reckon it's got something to do with the humidity of where I am. To be honest, okay. like it's just it's just Probably helps. People aren't separating. Like if people are still going shopping, people are still working. Blah blah blah. Yes, there are less people around, but you know, voting happened yesterday, where a lot of oh. people are like in a queue. Yeah. And nothing's really happened from that. It's just not getting a spread. But in the colder states like Victoria and New South Wales, it's getting out. It's pretty much getting out of control. Oh, no. Okay. Um, so we're extremely lucky where we are hmm. um, for it not to be getting too bad here. Um, but it's, as I said, like the other states are going into like stage three lockdowns now. Oh, yeah. Where you're not allowed to leave your house. Full oh, stop. Just straight up. Shopping. Okay. Yeah, you're not allowed to do anything. So. It, Basically, you've got to organize to get food delivered. There's like meals on wheels and stuff like that, that are being different communities and whatever, that, or like, um, yeah, communities and whatever that are like helping out with all that kind of stuff. So it's getting pretty bad there, which isn't good. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'll do it for the weekly COVID-19 update from COD. We can say yeah. it now. YouTube relaxed the restrictions of it because uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's this really popular live stream. Um, I'll drop the link in the chat. We're just like a live uh, coronavirus counter and everything mm. it has like 76,000 mm. views right now. I'm looking at it right now or like people watching it rather. Like live. Yeah. Yeah. The live counter here. You've probably seen it. And it was just like when YouTube seriously cracked down on it and everything they stopped um they stopped like putting that on the front page of like recommended stuff and everything or like trending or like most viewed or whatever to try and censor it but then people were like well no it was a decent source of information to pull from too yeah. right mm -hmm. and so it was just like oh youtube kind of realized oh okay then we should relax the guidelines so this this stuff appears so and the thing is the more information about you know what's going on in different countries and whatever that's out there the better in my opinion because people know what to stay away from people know yeah, what's going on in these areas and a lot of times governments don't really tell you what's going on like in my state mm -hmm. they haven't said anything about it at all okay so it's like this is awesome um 
We don't even know how many cases we've got here. Oh. Because they haven't told us. <laughs> Yeah. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. Um, but yeah, like communication is key in this mm -hmm. regard, in my opinion. 100%. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. So I think, yeah, that'll about wrap up a uh, little introduction segment here. So going right excuse me, into the housekeeping section here. Uh, the main site is, of course, culturefgaming.com. There you can find all the latest gaming news, reviews, opinion pieces, etc., etc. And then we also have a community Discord, a link to which you can find on the right-hand side sidebar of the main site. So go there, chat with everyone you see on the podcast, including about 90% of the COD staff who are active on the community Discord. And come hang out, talk about pretty much anything is fair game, um, to be real. Uh, although it is obviously a video game-focused website, <laughs> so that topic is preferred. Um, let's see, uh, Facebook, we have two Facebook pages. There's facebook.com slash uh, culture of gaming and facebook.com slash power of podcast. Uh, the Facebook pages for the main site and podcast respectively. And then Twitter at the COD network, Instagram at culture of gaming, youtube.com slash culture of gaming and twitch.tv slash culture of gaming. Furthermore, if you're wanting to, um, you know, maybe pass Want, you're looking for some more podcast material to uh, pass the time during the uh, whole uh, quarantine lockdown thing, then you can find a repository of all the previously recorded uh, Power Up podcasts um, on pretty much anywhere you get podcasts. So Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, etc., etc., and YouTube if you'd really like to see the video. And I don't know, it's like a decent comprehensive history of weekly gaming news for the past two years. And still going strong. So anyway... Uh, so, uh, jumping right into, I guess it's still kind of a new segment. This is like the third week or maybe fourth week we're going to be doing it. We're going to do a brief weekly site recap where we go through some of the, briefly go through some of the reviews and featured articles that are posted in roughly, uh, the time and space between, uh, last week's podcast and now currently. And once again, we're being recorded live on March 28th, 2020. I apologize for the screaming kid in the background. So, uh, <laughs> jumping right into um, the review portion, uh, the first review to go up since we last recorded. Um, and Anthony, by the way, your um, your Doom review is up. Okay. Anyway, so is... I did it. <laughs> yeah. So this is Pathologic 2. This was written by yeah. uh, Callum Marshall. Um, and it's kind of like a survival horror game, I guess. That's what I'm getting from it. It's yep. a weird thing. They kind of, I, I remember getting it? coverage for this. I have it downloaded. I think they, I was sent a copy from the publisher. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really, they are like really advertising. It's like, oh, this is a super weird game. This game is one of the weirdest games like ever made if I'm thinking of the same one. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I, I haven't played it because I was just really taken back by it. Oh, I played it for like 15 minutes because it ran extremely poorly when oh. i played it on my pc okay um but maybe that's gotten better now um it's like a psychological horror game isn't it yeah there's a bunch of weird stuff there's a lot of if i remember correctly there's a lot of like um systems going on and everything like that sure. um but yeah like i said I, I think i launched it a long time ago and sure, it sure. just did not run at all okay but it's better now yeah Okay, so, uh, yeah, a quick little, like, kind of, like, summary of the review, um, is, I believe, to be some of this paragraph here. Uh, if you enjoy walking simulators, yet long for more mechanics and intrigue, this is, uh, this is ideal for you. If you are a patient player, then value story over refined aesthetic, then you will appreciate this one for sure. However, if you enjoy heavily guided RPGs that have transparent, ideal playing styles, you will straight up have a bad time with this one. So... Interesting. And then uh, the good elements that uh, were highlighted were beautifully crafted narrative, stellar art design, brilliant survival mechanics, and a great musical score. And the bad is load times are laughable. I don't know if that means like they're too long or too short. I'd imagine if you play them. Huh? Too long. Okay. I would assume too long, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Unless like uh, this guy is like someone who's like, I didn't, I'm not able to use the bathroom, which is the load times are so <laughs> short, you know? <laughs> You know, like, uh, we were talking totally. about the uh, next-gen stuff, right? You no, know, load times are... Yeah, okay. Anyway, sound quality is inconsistent. Okay, interesting. Navigating to be unsatisfying. That kind of goes back to the whole walking simulator thing. And then he says it is a brutal and challenging experience and gave it an 8. 8 out of 10. So, and this yeah. is on the... This is a PS4 version of it. So. Yes. So, I'd imagine... Um, 
imagine maybe if you got it on PC, the load times would not be an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Like if you got it installed on an SSD or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, why did that not work? And um, he didn't link to like a store page or anything, so I can't tell you the price of it, but I don't know. I guess if you like survival horror, some RPG elements, then go ahead and check this one out. Uh, the next review up is a game called Stella, and this was written by um, our writer Adam Wiles, and he describes it as an artsy, minimalist platformer. It is an indie game. However, it does not satisfy my unholy trinity <laughs> of indie games, because while it is indie and it is a platformer, it is not, in fact, pixel-based graphics. The art style actually mm. looks pretty pretty cool um and so stella he says stella is a really beautiful experience i pretty much played the entire thing in one sitting and those two hours felt like a breathless otherworldly experience and uh the uh, good highlights from it are stunning art and world which judging by the screenshots looks pretty neat actually not gonna lie incredible sound mm. design and music and inventive in varied levels but the bad lacks originality that's kind of why my unholy trinity of indie games exists you know and so um <laughs> Yeah, I gave it an 8 out of 10, so looks uh, decent. Good it's a beautiful short platform experience that wears its influence on its sleeve. So, what, uh, was, uh, what was the name again? Stella, S-T-E-L-A. -E I'll drop the link to the review in the chat. Same people who worked on Halo Wars, I think. Oh, okay. interesting. One, I think it's one or two Halo games they worked on. I'm not sure if it's Wars or, lo or like four or something i'm not too sure but they worked on one of the halo games um also just for clarity pathologic 2 on the steam store is currently 50 dollars aud oh okay which is like 30 dollars usd I roughly think. probably might be here yeah, i'll pull it up on steam really quick just a second please um it's 35 dollars on steam there you go Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one other thing about to mention about Stella here is that it looks like it's on the Switch, although the platform wasn't explicitly stated. Uh, there is the Switch trailer, though, so I'm assuming it's on Switch. That's how he reviewed it for. Sure. And uh, he says that he's not sure it's worth the price tag. Um, you know, as previously mentioned, it's like two hours long, but it's twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, that's ten dollars an hour for entertainment. Um, so, yeah. Uh, AED. yeah. Interesting. Sixteen pounds. In case one of them. Uh, let's see. Nineteen ninety-five. Thank you for the follow. I have a feeling I know who that is. Thanks for watching. Um. So, uh. Yeah. And then moving on to the next review that went up. I just accidentally edited out the site, but it's mine, so it doesn't matter. I kind of know what I said anyway. Is Ori and the Will of the Wisps re uh, reviewed by yours truly? So, yeah, this was a game that was on my radar ever since it got announced, followed it delay after delay, and was happy to take the review for it once we got the code for it. Or in the Will of the Wisp is a fantastic game. It has the privilege of being the first game I've rated as a 10 officially for the site. Yeah, because I was cool. like, I enjoyed it that much. And uh, basically my concluding paragraph for it is Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a logical continuation of the Blind Forest, and although it carries many things over, what's added is meaningful and contributes to an even better experience. Will of the Wisps is an absolutely stunning and gorgeous game with fine gameplay and a simple yet emotional story. All of this is held together by a powerful soundtrack. And then the good, fun core platforming. It's one of the few platformers I can stand and play through, you know, because, you know, platforming usually isn't my jam. Um... Meaningful and emotional story, refined combat, uh, uh, vivid landscapes, alive in an organic feeling world, and the bad was just the odd technical hiccup. Um, it, I didn't, I'm not able to formally test this, but it seems like the game will only natively render at two resolutions, uh, even though you might have your resolution set to a different one. It's either 1080p or 4K, so it's like sure. I put it on 1080p on a native 1080p monitor. And it looked just fine. Yeah. Put it at 4K mm -hmm. on a native 4K monitor. Put it at 1440p on a <laughs> native 1440p monitor. And it looked like it was upscaled from 1080p. And there were a lot more issues with aliasing and everything. 
on that. Sure. This uh, is on PC, right? Yes, I reviewed it for uh, PC, and that's mentioned uh, sure. in the first line of the review. I just thought to mention that's why here. Thank you. I'd say it's definitely worth the uh, $30 price tag on Xbox One and PC, although, again, I did play it on PC. And Ori and the Will of Wisps is a fantastic continuation of the Ori series and clearly demonstrates years of love and care by the developers. Players will be traded to another vivid and vibrant world that truly feels alive like very few other worlds manage to pull off. Fans and non-fans of platformers will enjoy Ori and the Will of the Wisps and is definitely worth the price of admission. Once again, edge out of 10 out of 10. Go play this game. You'll have a okay, blast. You can get it on Game Pass for PC and yeah. Xbox One as well. So yeah, that'll be the most every... efficient way to play it. And then... Exactly. Uh, the second to the last thing here is with regards to Predator Hunting Grounds. Um, yeah, this is like Evolve, but if you like the Predators from Alien vs. Predator, I guess. I All don't right. know. Yeah. I, I love Predator. I genuinely Same. love that movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Like, that movie rips still mm -hmm. to this day. And like I was watching some of that gameplay. Oh, man, I feel just so sad. Heartbroken. Yeah. Yeah, man. It just... I haven't played it, so I couldn't tell you what, but it just looks like not what I want from a Predator game. Sure. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a free thing going on in PS4 right now. Yeah, it's a free trial. Uh, um, our writer, mm -hmm. Will Nelson, wrote about his experience with the free trial, and he says, I can tell you this, if it launches how it is now, I don't think it'll have legs. Yeah. It's yeah. by the guys who made um, the Friday the 13th game, yeah. I believe. Oh, okay. Correct. So they have some of that like lineage of like three versus whatever num certain number versus one, um, hmm. but I also did not like that Friday the Thirteenth game at all. Yeah, fair enough. So it's unfortunate that it kind of they're taking these like awesome IPs or doing some trying something cool with it. It's just not hmm. hitting the mark. I don't think. Mm -hmm. What was like that? Did um, they make like a game based off like that Predators movie that came out a few years ago? Also, um, I swear they did. Like I know, so it's like I know there was like no, I, circa I, no, 2010 I Alien vs Predator, which I it was just a game I honestly hold near and dear to my heart because it was pretty cool. It's like my jam when I was playing on that spot. So I really like the multiplayer of that. Um, interestingly enough, but um, hmm. yeah, they've made yeah, like three Alien games in the past like yeah. ten years. Oh yeah, so, there's I also think. been like Alien Isolation too. Yeah, and there's been Colonial yeah. Marines. Yeah, yeah. That was bad. Yeah, I know. Isolation was good, though. Isolation was pretty good. I liked it. Um, I never played it, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I know, so, I'm not a big fan of the hide mechanic kind of game. Okay. So, yeah, it's an Evolve style. You know, the game evolves. Um, four, versus, uh, four versus one. I guess they call it asymmetric multiplayer or whatever the formal mm -hmm. term is now for it. Asy yeah, yeah, asymmetrical multiplayer. And it's basically... Um, the Predator um, is pretty fun, um, from what he's uh, what the writer describes here, and um, basically the although the humans don't feel that fun, and there's a lot of long loading times, uh, the map isn't great, yeah. and there's loot boxes. You know, I'm noticing console players complain a lot about loading times lately. Huh. Yeah, Interesting. Well, well it's, I think this game is like a it's. It's, it's kind of like a 2014 kind of game, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like, it kind of feels yeah. like it's that old. So it doesn't look the greatest. Mm -hmm. um, I actually edited his article, so I'll go through a little bit of it. Um, oh, okay. So basically, everybody wants to play the alien because he's got a cool weapon set. He's like the authentic alien experience, basically. And he's quite cool to play as. The problem is, because everybody wants to play as him, um, loading times extend a lot because it's like trying to choose who gets to play as him if that makes sense mm -hmm. sure yeah um basically if you are playing as a squad of marines you have to do the same thing over and over again basically go here shoot this collect this run away 75 percent of the time while you while you are playing this game uh you, it's going to be extremely boring because you don't like there's no contact with the alien there's no fighting it's just run here do this same thing over and over again. Mm. Uh, so they were basically his biggest gripes he had with the load times, repetitive gameplay, loot boxes as well as Taylor mentioned. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so it's not looking too hot for it. It does release on April 25th, I believe, 25th or 27th, some, sometime yeah. around there. Okay. Month, yeah. So they yeah, don't like so a month to fit stuff. Month yeah. away. Um, <laughs> they probably won't get it done, unfortunately, in time. It doesn't look like. Yeah. So good points in the chat. Uh, Lexing brings up like. 
they're really long queues apparently yeah people are waiting like 10 minutes to get a game or even longer i don't actually know i saw some screenshots of like 10 minute like queues and yeah heck yeah it it could be because that no one's aware that the free weekend is this weekend i didn't even know it had the free weekend maybe it's more obvious on ps4 because i haven't turned on the ps4 this week or actually uh it was kind of dug in there you had to go to like store you had to go to the games and then finally it popped up i was actually browsing a little bit today um so it was a little buried in there i'd say Hmm. Um, so from his article it takes about a minute to get a match hmm. and the rest of the load time is waiting like to get into your match so yeah. it takes about a minute to match make and then it's like five or so minutes to load into the game so it just seems like slow load times more than anything else yeah um it's unfortunate because like I, I mentioned i love predator and mm, yeah like the i don't know just do some kind of some kind of story-based predator game you don't need to make i don't know the multiplayer seems a little weird for the context it's in mm-hmm. um and then someone else brought up in chat if they follow the third team that's developed like it's concerning because i don't even think you can play Friday the 13th online anymore. There was so I, much I, drama I, around that game. There was a lot oh, of yeah. bad stuff that like, happened. Like, don't that. look up uh, Total Biscuits, rest in peace, by the way, um, like, videos about that game when it came out. Oh. Yeah, movie-based games, uh, The Warriors, that's a really good movie-based game. Um, oh, Lord. Uh, you mentioned Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars Spider-Man? Spider-Man? Oh, Spider-Man. yeah, the, really 20, based, uh, the 2018 oh, Spider-Man is pretty good. 2018 Spider-Man, yeah. Um, but yeah hmm. uh, movie games um who street fighter the movie the <laughs> game technically yes oh, oh my goodness okay. that's a good one, one. Yeah, mortal kombat technically one. right there's a movie to uh, mortal, mortal kombat. kombat was a movie based on the game <laughs> i know sure. i know <laughs> so okay i don't know like movie based uh so alien isolation game? was good Wait, movie-based games, I'm trying yeah. to say game-based movies, but movie-based games seem to be getting progressively better. Like licensed yeah. titles, like way back in 20, 2007, 2010, you know, those yeah. games are so bad. Like Thor, the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Iron those are bad. Wanted. Iron Man. <laughs> they were shocking, but they're getting better, which is good. So, uh, slowly but surely. Was it so, Harry Potter 2 or Chamber of <laughs> Secrets? Is that the good one? Yeah. Like people generally uh, like there's like an open yeah. world ish Harry Potter game. Oh, that's like Order of the Phoenix. I had it on Wii and it was like amazing. Just like Yeah, people like that. generally like that game. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty good. Um does is it too cheeky to say oh what was I gonna say? Oh, I completely lost the train of thought there, sorry. Uh, just kidding. Oh, Kingdom Hearts, maybe technically. Uh, <laughs> that's not a that's nah. a movie in that's like eight hundred movies in itself. I lose something. Yeah. Going on with that game. Metal Gear Solid Wolf. 4 might as well be a movie. That is definitely a movie. That's... <laughs> that was a great movie, too, by the way. I enjoyed that movie. 10 out of 10, we watch again. Uh, not 3, um, but like 2 and actually... 1. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 4, those loading times are so crazy. Um, Armor oh, Solid 4. Also, vice versa as well. Movie based. No, so video game based movies are getting better as well. Mm. Sonic wasn't too bad. Was yeah, it horrible? Was it wasn't horrible? horrible. Yeah. Um, I think there's a new Mortal Kombat coming out. I'm not sure if it's a TV series or a movie. But... Oh no! There's a Monster Hunter movie coming. Oh, Way. Right. Oh yeah, Witcher that came out. That's bad. not bad. Witcher's bad. a good show. I enjoyed yeah. it. Wasn't horrible. Um, Mike, you know a lot about um, called Monster Hunter his... movie. Yeah, Paul. S. Is it Paul? Someone Anderson? I don't know. Mm. Same people that did Resident Evil. Right, the RE guys, yeah. yeah. Same act, okay. same woman lead and everything. Correct. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Um. Eh, no, never mind. Uh, just kidding. I keep losing my train of thought today. Uh, sorry. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right. So. Um. Yeah. I guess uh, anything else to say about the Predator stuff outside of oh, I wish. Get to the no. chopper. That's how okay. You say. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Honestly, Lord. not not a bad set of movies to a binge during the quarantine here. Predator movies, um, alien movies, not horrible. Mm. I don't know. Okay, actually, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Um, Predator 2 is bad. Um, Predator 2, the, is that the one in New York? Or right. like LA or whatever, yeah. Danny Glover? Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's not great. <laughs> How is Plague Inc? Wait, are you saying Plague Inc. is based on a movie? or It's based on real life now. I mean, yeah, true, but what? <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys watch Contagion? 
Yeah, I watched it a no. long time ago. Yes, I watched I it when it first like, came out. Yeah. Yeah, I remember being like, this movie is kind of annoying because of like how it ended and everything. Yeah. Um, but it's more just like realistic, and that's yeah. probably why I didn't like it. <laughs> get if you're playing Plague Inc. Get Plague Inc. Evolved, the one on I think it's Evolved, the one on Steam. Yeah. Um, you can literally do like a campaign where you can brainwash people, like spread nice. fake news and stuff. It's pretty it's good. Hilarious. It's, it's, really cool. it's great. I, I think um they came. I'm not sure if it got released, but they're working on a game where you like fight virus or fight the grand game mode of, yeah as yeah. the plague which is kind of neat um yeah. okay all right uh anthony you want to talk about doom eternal <laughs> oh, because no. your uh, <laughs> review just went live 18 minutes ago it did um so doom eternal i actually absolutely love this game um i have put around 16 hours into it now Solid. um so if you are if you've played doom 2016 uh, you will probably know, and any basically any previous Dooms, uh, story is basically non-existent in those games. With Doom 2016, yes, it is pretty much, it is pretty full of lore, but you've got to search for that lore. It's not in your face. You've got to get, like, collectible things and, like, codex pages. The Doom whatever. guy also actively ignores the lore being presented to him. Like, you know how he, like, shoves that terminal out of the way yeah. when it's, like, okay. monologuing to him or whatever in the elevator, yeah. you know? I'm kind of into that. I'm yeah. Into that um so doom eternal basically th puts all that like law in front of your face so you can collect codex pages they're easy to get they're easy to see but this game has a lot of reading in it so i hope you're a good reader um some of the <laughs> codex pages are like a good like one to two pages long <laughs> um i was sitting there for like 10 minutes reading this one codex page it's crazy uh i went into this game you can probably testify to this as well taylor um, just basically wanting to like rip and tear. Yeah. Uh, I came out as of did I. more story. <laughs> yeah. As did you. Um, I came out of it wanting more story. I haven't finished the game yet, so I'm very curious to see how it ends and like what it's all about. If you are going to play this, I recommend like watching a couple of lore videos beforehand, just on who the different factions are in the world. You know, mm -hmm. who the Doom Slayer is, his origins, basically. Um, then you'll understand a lot more about this game. As far as wait. Let me do that review as far as the finishing stuff i gave it a 9.5 the good it's got fantastic music or killer music as i called it insane <laughs> fight scenes actual lore and story now this which game is makes actually you feel, decent which is actually decent yeah. this game makes you feel like a god it does like when you i'm not a very good gamer i'll be <laughs> the first one to say that um when you're like wasding around the map you get your fingers get a workout like they get tired and it feels mm. like you're actually like typing properly as a great feeling if you're not a very good gamer. Mm. Um, it's a full on insane joyride full of insanity and testosterone, 100%. Um, platforming, a welcome mix up of gameplay. I enjoy the platforming, as some people don't, i.e., Taylor. I've uh, gotten used to it. <laughs> it does have a bit of a finicky upgrade system as far as like when you start out, it's a bit confusing. You don't really know what stuff does. Once again, a lot of reading as well. Uh, also, I kind of got lost with what gun I was using in some stages. Like, I wasn't sure if I was using the super shotgun or the shotgun or whatever. I was just, like, mashing, you know, left mouse button. And I'm like, okay, I'm holding a gun. <laughs> just kill stuff. <laughs> uh, what do. My review, that's what you do. My review summary is Doom Eternal is a thrill ride for anyone who decides to check this game out. It's a love letter to the Doom franchise and is a welcome follow-up to Doom 2016. Nice. Uh, it also introduces some new demons as well, which are a welcome, a welcome change in this game as well. Like, not that this was a bad thing in mm -hmm. Doom 2016, but it's got mm -hmm. like Marauders and stuff, which are cool. Mm -hmm um taylor anything else to add you've played this game so uh yeah so i kind of like i 100 percent agree with the review here i was uh reading yeah. it as you're talking about it here um i if like i reviewed i probably would have gave it a 9.5 also maybe a 9 also um the platforming yeah. stuff i don't know i've kind of come around to it's not as tedious or boring as i thought it would be and it's just like yeah. as the fight scenes get longer and longer throughout the game like as the game progresses they are kind of nice change up and kind of a nice break uh mm -hmm. yeah and then Start, um, yeah yeah starting nice. out platforming is a little bit too prevalent mm -hmm. but once you get into 
the game like a good 10 hours in it starts changing yeah and then um i don't know with the upgrade system my only real criticism of it is it's easy to forget what upgrade systems there are and what you might have going for you and then also there's like um i forget the exact name for it but it's like that upgrade tree or i guess circle where it's like you do it's the praetor suit upgrade tree yeah and everything mm. just like there's like an entire section in there that i just think is just like totally useless mm. like it's sure. the ice grenade stuff and part of the uh, normal grenade stuff too i just think it's just like half of the normal grenade stuff is kind of useless and then the ice grenade stuff just totally useless so it's like um also with like cool. gun upgrades and praetor suit upgrades i feel like some of the gun upgrades should be a part of the praetor suit upgrades yeah that makes sense and like vice versa mm -hmm. i like 90 percent of the praetor suit upgrades i feel are unnecessary and they don't really do anything for you okay. to be honest um but a lot of the gun stuff does stuff like does passive you know things to you like you might be able to get a boost if you're holding a certain gun and you get a sure. uh, like a finishing kill whatever it's called glory yeah. kill yeah um yeah anyway i won't go on too long about that <laughs> okay so yeah go check out uh, all the reviews that we have up um and again there is a dedicated like <laughs> left hand column to it the first thing you see on the site is the review section so yeah they're all yeah. fitted within that column right now so read them while they're still hot off the presses moving into the featured articles there have only uh realistically been uh two that have gone out this past week since uh, we last recorded the podcast uh the first one is by will nelson and i i actually edited this one <laughs> what happened to uh classic gaming mascots um it basically talks about how it's like you know we've gone from like pikachu <laughs> and sonic to you know master chief and everything you know so <laughs> Yeah, just uh, kind of an interesting kind of analysis of how kind of gaming icons have changed over the years and may not be as prevalent as they used to be. So sure. kind, of, mm -hmm. kind of an interesting read. Go check it out. Um, pretty much all there is to say about it without just spoiling the whole thing, right? Um, mm. So yeah. 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 And then um, the other one is uh, by uh, Melanie Ashford. She wrote, uh, "Why I Rage Quit Space Hulk Deathwing. I guess this is a <laughs> Warhammer thing. Um, yeah, I think of. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Space Hulk Deathwing is an FPS with a strong storyline. He plays a space marine with some cool weapons and abilities. The map is challenging, trying to figure out what helped make the game excellent for me. So, why did I quit a game that was having such a good time on? Um, let's see. So, this article basically talks about elements in video games where, like, you know, if you put a good hour into a level mm -hmm. of the game and then you die and you got to do all that again. Oh, it's yeah. basically like arguing why that is not necessarily, not necessary in game design nowadays and why it can turn a lot of people off. Has That's she played whole... Dark Souls? <laughs> I don't know. Ask okay. yourself. <laughs> um, but that's like a whole premise and it kind of argues why that's not necessary mm -hmm. and why developers shouldn't do that. In a sense, if that makes sense. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, uh, that might be an interesting read. Uh, we've had a couple of things go up lately about, like, game design and stuff. They've all been yeah. fairly interesting reads, so go check those out. Also, once again, the main site is culturegaming.com. Jumping into the new segment, which is, of course, our bread and butter. The leading topic for this week is the Nintendo Direct uh, Mini, as they call it. Uh, this was a surprise ninja drop on like Mar on March 26th, uh, a couple days ago. I did not watch it because uh, they always schedule it at like ungodly times in the morning for West Coast US. <laughs> so it's like 1 a.m. for me. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, which is weird because, like, Nintendo has an office in Washington. So you'd think yeah. they'd be a little bit more accommodating, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, I understand it's like, oh, they only care about New York or whatever, right? But I don't know. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It is like, oh, it's like <clears throat> midnight for Japan also, though. So I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. anyway. Um, then, not to know it's, uh, logistics about that. But anyway, uh, so, uh, Let's like I did not watch it, so I just have the website pulled up here. Uh, Anthony, did you watch it? I watched, so I didn't watch all of it. I watched like half of it. Okay. Um, because some people were interrupting me, and I gave up. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, I think I watched like a few things, and I was like, okay, this isn't important to me. I did yeah. not watch any of it, so I'm just gonna go through the website here and stop me if there's something you want to elaborate more upon. Uh, sure. Looks like Xenoblade Chronicles got a remaster, or like Definitive yep, Edition. Okay. Cool. Um, there's Bioshock. Um, 
There's Borderlands and XCOM 2 coming to the Switch. I yep, guess I'll so... be buying XCOM 2 on another platform. Yep, <clears throat> pretty much. So um... the Bioshock collection includes all Bioshock games. Excellent. Um, which you can pick up on Switch, mm -hmm. as well as Borderlands. So Borderlands, the Borderlands collection includes Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, and the pre-sequel or whatever it's called. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think they're going for like $30 or something, USD. Oh, okay. I would hope I so, yeah. <laughs> That'd be about um, the price sure I'd pay for them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I wonder if XCOM 2 will run well. Hmm. Oh. So going on that XCOM 2. <laughs> I love that game so much. Oh my goodness. So good. I played yeah. it on PC when it first came out. I haven't really played it too much. I played it on PS4. I bought it on PC pretty recently, and I just have it just because it was on sale. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then if it comes to like a mobile platform, like I'm down. But it mm. Auto play. It, ru it ran really poorly on PS4. Okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, just going down through the headlines here, uh, Square Enix managed to crank out yet another JRPG. Um, what it, there's no like text about it, there's only a trailer. So, what, what is this exactly? God, okay. Uh, this is, yeah, I'm just gonna stip to the end here where they flash the title. Um, it's like a four. Oh, are you watching the direct, are you? No, it's oh, it's Bravely Default 2. Oh, okay, uh, that's right, cool. Right. There's an anime. I don't think it's related, though. That's also not regularly default. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't think it's related at all. But okay, so uh, anything about that? No, I did play the first one. I enjoyed it. I only played like two hours of it. Mm -hmm. And then I got rid of my, I think it was on 3DS. Um, got rid of my 3DS. That was like oh, a few yeah. years back. Um, so I'm keen for the second one, to be honest. Cool. It's like a fun game. Cool. Guys who make um, what's that game that everyone loves? That really long. Uh, Octopath Traveler. Yes, that one. Okay, thank there you. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Nice. All right. Um, and then enjoy tabletop classes from around the world. This isn't tabletop simulator. This is Clubhouse Games. Fifty-one worldwide classes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Um, Burnout Paradise Remastered mm -hmm. is coming to Switch as well, as well as Panzer Dragoon, which is that old ex original Xbox game. Mm. Um, Panzer Dragoon Remake is currently available on Switch now, so you can go and play that. Uh, it's like a... It's like a... It's like an on-rail shooter. Yeah, game. basically, but you're flying a dragon. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember it came out on Sega Saturn, the original one. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if this is the same exact one as that. I okay. think it's the same one. It's just like re uh, remade yeah. to look better. Mm, okay. okay. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is dating an expansion. Uh, Correct. Okay. It's pretty cool. Um, looks like there's uh, they're de already detailing an update to New Horizons that'll be free. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a lot of like uh, holiday stuff. So mm. here in the states, Easter's coming up. So. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, there's... Funny day. Okay. This is Easter. Excuse cute me. little Switch game called Good Job, which yes, I actually got that. Oh, okay. Um, because it looked cool. It's it's kind of like Hotline Mi uh, Hotline Miami, but with <laughs> yes, so it's like Hotline Miami, but flinging furniture all over the place. Okay. Oh. Um, so IKEA you simulator. In... <laughs> I'm into that. Yeah, so far. kind of. Okay. So you go into like an office. You start. So you. Get a job at your dad's office. It's like a massive building, and you move up the floors. Mm -hmm. So you start out like, you know, you have to fix a projector. So you've oh. got to move a projector from one area of the office to the other, and you can like plug in power cords and then like slingshot the projector through walls, like through people. Oh wow! Hey, what's yeah, the slurring. name of this game again? Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I can't, all right, I can't this seems pretty it. absurd. I'm have to pick this up. This looks kind of cool. Um, That's kind of cool. Okay. Oh, I think it's not... a good day. Okay. Sorry. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to do that uh, a little bit later. Um. But now that you bring it up, might as well talk about it. Catherine Full Body is coming to uh, the Switch, which pretty cool. Uh, which is you know like yeah. the I don't want to call it a remaster necessarily of just the first Catherine game. Um. Because they're adding, like, an entire, like, third girl for a storyline in there, too. So it's probably going to have Ooh. plenty of original content in it. 
So, yeah. yeah. Although, I, that would probably be my preferred platform to play it on would be Switch, probably. Catherine Full Body. Just be careful playing it in public. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> assuming... That's, well, okay. Yeah. That's assuming like they're keeping everything from the first day. And be careful playing it in public is what I will say. Just weird, I think, right? Like, like weird puzzles and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's like... It's like a dating sim as well. Yeah, yeah. But I know, kind like, of. the main, like, gameplay is, like, jumping, like, up a tower or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. 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 Thing. yeah. Kind of, yeah. I think I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a it's a fun game. Yeah, there's like little like cheap. It's almost like a. I don't know what the title I'm thinking of. Never mind. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Catherine Full Body onto the Switch uh, with the Nintendo's policy. It will not be censored in any way. So uh, have fun, kids. Um, <laughs> Marvel's first family joins the Alliance new trailer. It's like Marvel Alliance Three is getting a new expansion called the Black Order. It adds the Fantastic Four. Um, and like Doctor Doom as well. So it's like a storyline surrounding him, I believe. Okay. From this, uh, I've, you just missed a couple of things, so we'll. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Reinfit Adventure has a new rhythm game mode. Do you correct? I mentioned that's a fun one. Do you guys win. know that uh, Reinfit Adventure is like going for like hundreds yeah. of dollars right now? It's like three hundred dollars. So wild. It's the most it's... fun way to stay inside and exercise, right? I, yeah, yeah, I guess. But I just it's crazy. Anyway, so. Um, Animal Crossing New Horizons is getting like an Easter mode thing where you, uh, so once the update comes, mm -hmm. uh, which is like April sometime, uh, no, I think it's March 28th, so I think it dropped you today through to April like 17th, this mode is. Uh, so an Easter bunny basically visits your island and you can then craft like Easter furnishings, so like Easter, uh, like an egg table, a bit, uh, like an egg lamp all these different things. Um, and you can also dig up like Easter eggs as well. Hmm. So that sounds like a cool, fun thing. Are uh, they also doing like a fishing tournament as well, I want to say? Oh, cool. I'm glad that comes, that comes back. I've seen people talk about that. I'm not 100% on that, but I think they did mention it. So do your own research on that, but I'm fairly sure they're doing a fishing tournament. Cool. Hmm. Um, also another quick thing you made missed as well yeah. uh fighter pass volume 2 is getting its first fighter haven't gotten uh, that which is a dude from arms nobody's got any idea who he is okay he's one of the arms fighters i feel like i called this a long time ago where like probably be the yeah. same character that you can just switch the skins yeah probably <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, right. Like, the arms person and then like as you like the the koopa troopas or whoever they are mm -hmm. the the baby bowser ones that you can play in like you can like switch the person inside of them. oh sure yeah. yeah or like the hero you know you can pick like the hero from mm -hmm. uh whatever you guys know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah. gotcha it's all right and long. then there's uh teen's bounty 2 is coming to the switch which is a tactical rpg uh apparently it's a yeah. classic i don't know never heard of it before <laughs> it's been on pc and whatnot so. oh, okay um uh, shinsekai into the depths is uh coming into um Switch um, kind of reminds me of like the old Wii game, Endless Ocean. I played back when the Wii was still relevant. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever play that game? I don't know. It was kind of neat. Um, mm -hmm. I probably remember it looking a lot better than it actually mm -hmm. does, just considering how the Wii would have probably handled water. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then so I think that'll about do it. We did the uh, DLC for Smash. Um, let's see what Mouse here in the sat in the chat says. The roster for Smash was figured before Arms got announced, but some are losing their minds right now because Spring Man currently in assist trophy could be that fighter. A lot of people love their make believe rules. Okay. Once again, the Smash community does not seem happy about this. Are they ever happy about anything? Where was it? I just saw it. Um. Oh, there it is. So Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Mm -hmm. And Star Wars Pod Jedi. Racer or something like that, right? Oh yeah, episode one is coming to Switch. And they're both yeah. being like remastered in a sense, like they're getting a makeover to look nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I will definitely um, pick them both of those up because they're both great games. Okay. Yeah. Old classics. I kinda remember that game being alright. Mm. Jedi Academy? Yeah. No, the other one, the oh. racer one. Okay. Yeah, episode one, pod racer, whatever that. Oh is. yeah, pod racer. That was good. It was the yeah. best part about episode one. It was the spin-off video game where they just raced pods. Anyway. Um. And then, did we mention this other game, <clears throat> Ninjala? But I briefly said it's coming to the Switch. Oh, okay, Ninjala. yeah. It, it looks a lot like uh, like a Splatoon type thing. 
Okay, but with the ninjas instead, which are crueler than squids, by the way. Um, I mean, the the art style. I don't know the actual gameplay, but oh, okay. Just kidding. Very, yeah. Um, cool. another title that's going to switch as well is Fusa take on the role of a DJ in this upcoming rhythm game from Harmonix, the creators of Rock Band. Fusa launches the Switch this fall. Okay. That sounds cool. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think that's it now. Yeah, didn't know that wrap up the direct. So uh, if you're really interested in any of those, go watch it yourself. Um, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Andrew, uh, well, we kind of talked about a little bit last week how, you know, Netflix mm-hmm. was limiting bandwidth in order to um, help people navigate the whole COVID quarantine. Also, even make sure everyone can kind of use the internet to an admitted, admittedly admonished uh, quantity, but still use it nonetheless. So what mm-hmm. companies are producing stuff now? Turns out they're coming after your video games now, guys. Damn it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Sony, I'm not sure if this replies. I'm just Sony right now. Mm-hmm. But they are uh, taking action, it seems like, to, uh, I guess, slow down people's game downloads. Um, so they announced it, I think, a couple of days ago in Europe. But <laughs> recently, they beginning to get, this is updated. It's updated uh, 24th, so like four days ago. Uh, beginning today, we will take similar measures in the United States, and we will continue to take appropriate action to do our part to if, help ensure internet stability as this unprecedented situation continues to evolve. Blah, blah, blah. Stay safe. Um, so, yeah, they are going to start uh, limiting, like, not limiting, I guess, but slowing everyone's download uh, speeds. But j- this just pertains to uh, downloading games. So your updates, your okay. full, your full files. Um, apparently this won't affect multiplayer at all. Um, sure. That's, that's according to a lot of websites saying, oh, it's not going to worry about multiplayer. That'll work the same. Um, but yeah, so downloading games is going to take a hit. Makes sense, I guess, you know, with tons of people downloading games. Well, as they should not have to go to the store to do it. Um, it's unfortunate that it's going to happen, but it makes sense, I guess. Um, I don't know. Anthony, do you do you digital usually only, or you, do you like to get the boxes? Uh, digital only, mostly, because I'm a PC gamer. Um, as far as PS4, I do have a couple of like physical copies, like Spider-Man and mm-hmm. God of War, but most of it is digital. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't actually realize the tail was gone. <laughs> uh, so I'm mostly I'm back digital. now. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mostly do digital with like Switch as well, and I'm running out of space on the Switch, so I need to get like a SD card. Mm. Yeah, I happen to get a mini SD, like a 512 gigabyte one or something like something oh, wild. Wow. I just happen to come up, come up on one, um, or 128, and I'm like, cool. I guess I'm just all digital now on my Switch, uh, yeah, which is yeah. which is nice. You know, mm-hmm. I used to be all about getting those boxes. I'm like, oh, I like having the box and the disc, but. Now I'm like, ah, no plastic waste. No, I can just, can just download it and not deal with it. So slowly yeah. starting to uh, transfer to digital. So this is kind of a bummer, I guess. Um, but they're slowing everybody down. But as long as the game, you know, eventually gets downloaded, I guess it's fine. I'm not going anywhere. Sure. No, no rush for these games well, to download. Sure. I mean, <laughs> you guys are all good because your download rates are insane. You do but like, yeah. yeah. Yes. But ours are like 5.4 megabytes a second. Like ours are really slow. So okay. if we get slowed down, even further, yeah. we're gonna have problems. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it seems but, like all a lot of these. Have you guys talked about YouTube yet, or no? No, yeah, we haven't. Just on PlayStation. Yet. It seems like a lot of these, like so, it's like Netflix and PlayStation. They are doing it in a lot of regions where you know the net infrastructure isn't all that great or is limited. So it's like places like Australia. Uh, the Verge article here regarding Sony specifically mentions Europe as where this has already yeah. effect or in place in. Oh, so, no. mm. yeah, yeah, Europe and United States uh, now mm-hmm. officially. I hope announced. Steam doesn't do this. I don't imagine Steam oh. would. I really don't think they will because I'd like more. You've got more people really gaming on console and PC at this point. Mm-hmm. I would say so, more console players probably than PC players, right? Probably, yeah. probably yes. Yeah. So it's probably not as big a deal to Steam. Mm-hmm. So, but like, if our download rate gets cut, you're not going to be able to do anything. Like, right. That's just you can't. They can't cut that. No way. But anyway, whatever. Well, guess what? And then 
Yeah, well, I'm trying to jump the gun Hell. there a little bit, but there's another company also participating in the uh, bandwidth limitations. Mm. Yeah, YouTube's. I believe they went down the other day for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think so well. too. Yeah. Um. So I got the monkey. Starting to, yeah, starting to make sense. So YouTube is going to, or if they already have, uh, you kind of sent me this link uh, from Linus Tech Tips, uh, the but they're there. apparently kind of reducing the default uh, playback to 480p uh, yes. globally yeah. as well. Um, so I, I just did a quick test. I opened up my YouTube and clicked the video. Mine went straight to 720. Um, Let's do a quick test so, also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I just clicked I just clicked one and wanted to see where it was at. I was like, okay, we're at 720. Not, not the best. Uh, there are definitely more options too. Like this video I clicked on has like 4K Mine options. defaulted to 1440p. Which is the native resolution yeah. of my monitor. Okay. Mine is on 1080 60. Hmm. Okay. okay. Is my monitor to 720. You can change it, though. Like, I can go to 4K if yeah. I want to. I can change it. I mean, but hmm. I can do 4K. I don't think it will do anything. There, is, there isn't even a 1440p option for me on most videos. It's more 480. I mean, it's, sorry, there's no 440p options, mainly, mostly 480p. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how YouTube is like trying to set the default. Um, I like, thought it was 440p. Okay. No, 480p. 440p <laughs> is technically a thing, but it's not a 16 by 9 thing. So. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm not quite sure uh, how true that is, but mm. maybe for some people with slower speeds, they're getting straight to 480. Um, I don't know. But if that is the case, that's, I mean... It makes sense. YouTube went down the other day, probably because they've had a, a huge influx in viewers. Because yeah, kids are at home. Kids are at home, and mm -hmm. YouTube's yep. a pretty easy like source just to like go on and lose hours of your life, right? So, Truly, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting though. You know, hopefully these these internet companies don't um, like limit people's stuff, like we talked about a little bit earlier, but. Yeah, yeah it'd be it'd be a, a bummer if people are starting to get limited because more now yeah. than ever people are relying on the internet to like <laughs> like we mentioned like you know do classes and mm -hmm. educate and all that stuff. So yeah, well, like a lot of schools here are starting to go like online only now. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a up. a teacher friend who is teaching all uh, via Z the Zoom app now. Yeah, my sister's young so. children have that same thing. Although they're using a similar service called WebEx. Sure. Yeah. Technically, we, our schools haven't closed yet. Oh, okay. Um, we haven't been, like, they reckon it's a bad idea. Um, so it's going to be interesting, like, once all school kids and stuff start learning online, if that's going to impact our internet much or what it's going to do. So, hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> internet is it's in a weird, we're in a weird place with people getting slowed down and all that good stuff, but, you know. I don't know when yeah. we'll. I don't know when I'll see it personally because I do have high internet, but maybe I'll see it sooner than later. Right. Yeah, I think it's like if the region is like strained for bandwidth, they might consider it. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, some stats here is like YouTube is currently generating almost two times the amount of traffic of Netflix worldwide. It's kind of yeah, kind of it crazy. Sense, right? It's free. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. I've seen a little with the Discord. Yeah, Discord's been pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, um, it's definitely been a noticeable slump, like noticeable when slump. Like when does Discord not have any issue? <laughs> well, more so, more so than, than usual, than I should that. say. Um, I'm having some audio issues here and there. People are just dropping out. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We routinely have like eight people in a voice chat on a server, plus like a music bot going, and like the music bot and Discord just start like just crapping out on us sometimes. Yeah. So it's kind of a lot. That yeah. ringing back, 40p is so low. I mean, like, I really is. don't know when the last time I watched a 40p thing. Like, <laughs> it wasn't since, like, the you birth know? of YouTube since 40p. Like, well, I, yeah. <laughs> it's it like, like? <clears throat> it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. You can literally count <laughs> the pixels. Oh, God. Yeah. So, yeah it does not look good. Yeah, it's not great. Um, That's... Obviously, some people aren't fortunate enough to be able to play, like, in really good quality, but, like... It is. Oh my goodness. 
That was an elite I didn't think I'll be able team to play match, and everyone who's in Discord was like, Discord just crashed. Write to your law majors and tell them to tell ISPs that the C virus has exposed that they need to step it up. And it, okay, the Discord did so bad. Um, in the lobby, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Not to get, um, like too too politically slanted here, but like you know the I at least here in the U.S. the ISPs got tossed billions of dollars. I think the number is something absurd, like four hundred billion of taxpayer dollars to get fiber optic infrastructure across the entire country. A few years ago, haven't mm, done yeah. that. This was back in like twenty twelve too. So yeah, to give you an idea. Wow. I can go to South Korea and did a ten gigabit connection at my house. Oh, yeah. look, stop whinging, okay? We can't even get a one gigabit connection. <laughs> like, we can't even get... Like, our our constant speed... Okay, so yeah. let me just say... I should say, I should that. say that I am quite lucky to live in a metropolitan mm -hmm. area with... You know, privileged. Yeah, with good speeds. Yeah. Yep, yeah, pretty much, straight up, right? I'm quite lucky to live in a metropolitan area with uh, good speeds. And, uh, but you know, it's like across the U.S., unless you're like a pretty bustling urban environment and everything, then you probably don't have access to, you know, like gigabit speeds. So to give you an idea, like our internet, Australian internet, that is, is worse than most third world countries. So in Thailand, you get better internet. Yeah. Everywhere you go, basically you get better internet. Um, our consistent speed is 45 megabytes a second. Okay. Which is pretty slow. Um... Megabits me, per I'm second. Megabits per second, whatever. There's a um, there is a distinct difference. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, I'm lucky to even be able to game online, to be honest. Like, most people in Australia can't game online because their internet is so slow. Hmm. So, I'm not I'm not looking forward to when that gets slowed down here, to be honest. Okay. It'll happen. It's going to happen, probably. 100%. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Bye, online gaming. Have a good life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So, anything <laughs> else stuff. to add to the network woes? Uh, no. Not yet. We'll, we'll find out when I start. We can't load a web page. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Won't get that bad, hopefully. Evidently, our hosting site for the, uh, for the website has been hit kind of hard by stuff because it's been noticeably slower since so this whole yeah. thing kicked off. A lot of websites have been noticeably yeah. slower. Yeah, so data centers yeah. has been being hit pretty hard. Um, um, anyway, which would make mm. sense. All right, so um, I, there's no good segue from this. Um, <laughs> there's no good segue from this into this. Anyway, uh, let's talk about a new VR challenger entering the yes. fray. Anthony. So this is, it. This is interesting because uh, Steam already had, or Valve already has their own VR headset. Um, but this article is coming from techruptor.net. HP reveals a new VR headset in collaboration with Microsoft and Valve. A next-gen virtual reality headset is in the making. Microsoft Windows Mixed Reality lineup in 2019 featured the 599 Reverb VR headset, promoted from its high resolution and inside-out tracking. Earlier today, HP announced they are collaborating their efforts with Valve and Microsoft to reduce the next generation of virtual reality headsets. Although the announcement is pretty light, featuring only a brief description and a short teaser, the Reverb VR isn't alone in the Windows Mixed Reality lineup, as it boasts the Samsung HMD Odyssey Plus headset as well. Both of them were relatively criticized for their mediocre performance and controller design. Hopefully, the partnership with Valve addresses the controller's design shortcomings. Uh, as you, a lot of you already know, Valve does the, what's it called? Steam Index. index. The Valve Index. A uh, Valve Index, mm -hmm. there you go. Which is like the top, tippity toppity VR headset at the moment. Yeah. Um, it is quite impressive what they've got in that thing. Yeah. Uh, this is a quote coming from HP, I believe. The next generation HP virtual reality HMD developed in collaboration with Valve and Microsoft, delivers an immersive, comfortable, and compatible VR experience. It's the new standard in VR. Fun. Uh, the few seconds we got to see a glimpse of the headset itself indicates it will feature the two black spots used for Windows Mixed Reality's inside tracking technology. That's the only feature we can guess for now till the studio decides to share further information on what each member contributes to the headset's design. 
as of the time of writing, there is very little detail on its pricing, its release window, specifications, or its features. Much of the, anything. <laughs> the, uh, however, HP released this short 14-second teaser showcasing a glimpse of the dark headset with the modern Hewlett Packard... Hewlett? Yeah, Hewlett Packard logo. It's HP. Hewlett yeah. Uh, Hewlett Packard logo in the top middle, ending with no compromises as its slogan. We'll make sure to update you whenever further information is available. I will share the video, copy the URL in the Twitch chat if you want to check that out. Yes, I don't care about chat rules. Thank you, Twitch. Stop popping up. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh... All right. So, uh, yes. so yeah. that looks quite interesting. No, Half Life Alex released this past week, and it's apparently just like insane VR stuff, which is good. I don't want to say we necessarily mm -hmm. predicted it on the show, but we were all kind of hopeful that it was like, oh, you know, hopefully this will move VR forward, like VR gaming forward. And by all accounts, it mm -hmm. kind of did and everything. Like the level of granularity in that game seems to be up there. Um, so that's good. And then, you know, Valve kind of pushed things forward with their Index headset too. HTC, again, also in partnership with Valve, released um, another iteration of the Vive called the Vive Cosmos, which is $100 cheaper than a fully loaded Index. So maybe if you want to spend $900 instead of $1,000 on a VR headset, then uh, yeah, go for it. Um, this um, is this is pretty cool um, to see Valve working with so many people like HP, HTC, stuff like that, and everything. Because like Valve really, really is into VR now. So outside right. of just like Half Life Alex and everything, they really see it as a good medium going forward. And one day we will get like SAO full dive technology. Okay, that's hype. what this is all leading to. That's what I'm all hoping it will lead to. Okay. All right. Anyway. <laughs> um. So Steam ha so doesn't Steam have a service called Steam VR itself where like HTC headsets and whatever can connect to it? Yeah, it's kind of. So yeah. like Steam VR and everything like that, that's all an SDK for um yeah, that's all like SDK stuff to make VR games with and it's like sure. ideally your VR headset supports the SDK so that sure. VR games made with that um work on your headset. I'm by no means a VR expert at all. I hardly, I've never used a VR headset. I've never tested one out. I would love to, but I've got no idea how it works. Or Come to CES like next year. I'm planning on it uh, okay. as long as Corona isn't still around. Um, but, but the I flight mean, was cheap. In the Microsoft, <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. In the Microsoft side of things, like with the Series X coming out next year, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if this is this may be compatible with the series x that's what i was thinking i was gonna maybe know, it could also be like on the microsoft does have a mitz or like kind of like a virtual reality division because they did the hololens stuff so yeah 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 all right anyway um so that'd be cool to see like if this had even if it's a cut down version for the series x because yeah. you need a beastly pc to run a vr headset if it's not fully like mm. inbuilt slowly um, getting more and more affordable yeah, yeah i was gonna say but, i feel like it's not as bad now to have like a vr pc i think um, you can get away with like a vr pc and like a vr headset for around fifteen hundred dollars now so yeah but and i mean like I mean, a decent vr have... headset okay most people have like pcs that are almost vr ready right yeah i'd say a solid amount of people do yeah like mine I mean, is I'd... probably yeah. on the edge yeah i just need a better like... gpu and i'm set really okay yeah. i'd say i don't know if you're in a position to buy like a uh uh, VR headset, your PC might probably already be up to snuff for it. Probably, yeah. So, There's like um, um, software yes. and whatever that you can that you can run your spec through that will tell you what you need to run. Yeah, so, Valve yeah. should still have it's, their VR ready to check. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Sure. What is that? There's a, I know there's a one where you can like, it stands on its own, and then you can like plug it into your PC and it gets your, you like get boosted. It's, so that's pretty cool. It's like the Oculus uh, Quest or whatever, I think. It uh, might be the Quest. I, I know there's some the Oculus headset. No, the Vive Pro is uh, like a wireless version of the HTC Vive. It still requires the full PC. Oh, sure. It just connects oh, okay. wirelessly. Sure. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, VR is doing cool stuff. If only like, I don't know, it was just more accessible, which clearly it's getting there. Yeah, well, yeah. if we had more games like Half-Life Alex, because that was getting like 10 out of 10s and stuff. Um, yeah. If we had more games, like more mainstream games, yeah. instead of like gimmicky Crap. Yeah. <laughs> there needs to be. A... We're getting. The... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Oh, okay. There needs to be like a VR headset that allows you to do full room stuff for like five hundred dollars and be decent. Yeah. Like obviously yeah. not as great of an experience, but still be decent, trying to get your foot in the yeah. door, sort of thing. Right. And it's just like the most you can get for like five hundred dollars in VR space is like the headset and maybe the controllers itself. You certainly can't get like the two lighthouse boxes for it or anything like that, right? So Well, wow. I know a lot of them are doing the inside out tracking. Yeah. So Yeah. That's helping. Like we're getting there, right? Like Yeah. Like we're, now, we're finally getting rid of the cords, like or most of the cords, yeah. right? Now we gotta wait a couple more years, and then the price will start coming down. So right. like actually, like most people can afford. And the thing that will fill that space will be something that directly interfaces with your brain, which is cool. Oh yeah, I mean, get my new eyeballs put in. So exactly. I can... Go join Elon Musk. And okay. Have you seen uh, like the... the Black Mirror where the guy like puts the thing on and just like yeah. goes back? Mm -hmm. That one's creepy, but that like yeah. totally like would be a thing. I feel like. Uh... So this, from this very short video, obviously you can't 100% tell, but it looks like it's um, wireless, <clears throat> which looks cool. So yeah, it's most likely. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that'll be the I new like... standard for stuff, right? Just yeah. having a wireless yeah. VR headset. Yeah. So exactly. then that like leads to a bit of lag and like, well, that's yeah. an be kind of self-contained in my opinion. It's been decent. As, and then, like, you don't have to drill, like, stuff, walls, like, holes in your wall to, like, you know, Mount get stuff. tracking yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're getting there, man. Give Slowly it some time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool, though. I'm glad there's there's more people, like, trying out this VR, like, stuff. Mm. Um, so. Yeah. But okay. Wait, uh, yeah. oh, no, this is a different one, right? Windows Mixed Reality lineup. Yeah. 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 Reverb has that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, moving on from VR, uh, let's kind of hit back on a story that we've covered for the better part of a month or so at this point regarding Konami and Sony and Kojima. Yes, uh, so this is talking about this. Okay, so this article is coming from Rely on Horror, uh, which I believe we've linked, uh, we've referenced this website a couple of times. Yeah. Previously, uh, so the headline is Konami claims recent Silent Hill rumors are false. Ooh, mm -hmm. Unfortunate, <laughs> but not the Metal Gear rumors or the Castlevania rumors, though, right? <laughs> I just breathed something back. I don't know what happened there. Uh, despite the fact that l the last proper Silent Hill game released in 2012, and that it has been nearly six years since Kojima Productions' Silent Hills was cancelled. Demand for the series to return has not relented. Rumors upon rumors of the series comeback have circulated since Silent Hills. Some plausible, others nonsensical attempts at trolling fellow fans and chasing clout. We've openly scoffed at the majority of these rumors, but uh, most recently, multiple trusted sources of ours provided similar details regarding a Silent Hill reboot and the continuation of Silent Hills. In the pursuit of more information, we asked Konami for some answers. Hmm. Now, what I'll do real quick, this article is tiny. So yes. In, in, I don't have a best eye, so I'll just, just enlarge a bit. Uh, according to North American PR representative for Konami, recent Silent Hill rumors are not true. This is a quote. We're aware of all the rumors and reports, but can confirm that they are indeed not true. I know it's not the answer your fans may want to hear, so the Konami US PR rep. We asked the Konami USPR rep for some clarification on the company's claim that the rumors were false, asking if both reported Silent Hills reboot by SAE Japan Studio with Toyama, Ito, and Yama, Yama, uh, Yamaoko, Yamaka. I suck at pronouncing names. Hold I on. Do we, I completely lost. Y-A-M-A-O-K-A. Where is it in the article? I, I completely lost my place. <laughs> Good job. Uh, fourth paragraph. One, two, three, four. Oh, with uh, so do with Toyama, Yamaoka. Ito, and Yamaoka. 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 No, it'd be Yamaoka. Yeah, it's Japanese. Yamaoka. Yamaoka. Okay. Uh, so those guys on board, as well as the separate Silent Hill. Sony is allegedly ditching to Kojima Productions. Are pitching. both not true? Pitching. Uh, pitching to Kojima Reductions. Both are not true. No response was received after a week of follow-ups. The initial response about the rumors was received within an hour of our first email. Wow. In the Konami rep's original email, he also said, it's not to say we are completely closing the door on the franchise, 
just not in the way it is being reported. So while Konami US is delaying, uh, denying that the rumors are true, they're once again acknowledging that the series is still alive in some way. I guess that's echoes, one way to interpret that. I guess. Uh, this echoes what we've heard a few times from since Silent Hill's cancellation, that something may happen someday. And It'll be a Pachinko about... machine. <laughs> Totally. Another source of ours not referenced in the last rumor, post confirmed as such following the uh, post publication. We do know that Christoph, Christoph Ganz's third Silent Hill film is in development, at least. Oh, didn't know that. Well, we do trust our sources who have shared accurate information with us about multiple game series and industry happenings in the past. Publishing Konami's side of the story is important. That said, the details regarding recent rumors mostly pertain to alleged events happening between Konami Japan, SAE Japan Studio, and Kojima Productions. We have only spoken to Konami US, and we are hoping for additional information from them to have a clear-cut answer about what aspects of the rumors are false. If received, we'll update this story. Once again, that's coming from relyonhorror.com, if you want to keep an eye on that. Okay. Um... Sad news, I guess. I don't really care about Silent Hill, but whatever. Look, they only they only closed the door on Silent Hill. They did not close the door on the Metal Gear or the Castlevania rumors. Or so it's fine. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, Silent Hill can die as long as we get Metal Gear Six. It's okay. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, it just seemed like something is maybe they're doing. Obviously, they're like not. In, they're saying like, oh, we're not doing it in this capacity. So. Mm. Maybe it's just not them partnering with Sony or, you know, who knows? Yeah. It sounds like they're not partnering with anybody on this, like Silent yeah. Hill specifically. They may have passed off other projects, as Taylor said, to other studios slash Sony, whatever. Mm. Um, hopefully something comes out with any of these games. Yeah, yes. definitely. Um, yeah. Well, tune in next week for the latest round of rumors regarding this story <laughs> because it's been popular. Yeah. Um, it's been going on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do you think this is just Konami playing coy, or...? Uh, it could be the USPR people don't know what Japan's doing. That's also mm. a good point, because this, yeah, they should have reached out to Konami Japan, because all this stuff is going down in Japan, right? Because it'd be between Kojima, Konami, and yep, Sony, who are all now. based mainly in Japan, so... Well... They may ha they may have reached out to Japan, but then Japan's like, "Now nah, we'll punt you over to US, who have no idea what's going." On. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Like outright saying no is just like a bad idea, right? You might as well be like, "Oh, we're looking into it," and then maybe eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we've said all we can about this, but. Right. Um. What the heck was I going to say? <laughs> Everyone's mind is just somewhere else today. Yeah. Uh, somewhere else. I had a train of thought and then I just forgot. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Nope. Lost. Perfect. Okay. All right. right. So maybe Silent Hills will come back. Maybe not. Konami PR doesn't know what's going on. Uh, so we will mm -hmm. keep you guys updated as the story develops. Uh, so I have three kind of like quick stories to uh, bring about today. The first one is Fully at Home, the project I've totally been shilling for with my friends and uh, I even wrote an article about what it is and everything. Uh, so go read it there. I just linked it in the chat. Get a quick brief of what it is if you don't know already. Uh, it has passed the one and a half exaflop barrier which is a way of measuring computational power. So the way that like, uh, computer prefixes work and everything when dealing with the data is it goes, there are eight bits to a byte, okay? Yeah. There's a thousand bytes to a kilobyte. There's a thousand kilobytes to a megabyte. There's yeah. a thousand megabytes to a gigabyte. There's a thousand gigabytes to a terabyte. There's a thousand terabytes to a petabyte, and there's a thousand petabytes to an exabyte. And now this is where we're kind of at now, everything. So it's that level, and it's at one and a half of those. So that's a lot. You know, that's really a lot yeah. of competition. Uh, did you want to explain what Foley and Home was really quick? Just yeah, so Foley at Home is a distributed uh, computing project, meaning that you download this client, you receive uh, workloads from a server, 
Like it's basically like you have your PC crunching numbers based on a workload that it receives from the server, and then it sends the completed data back to the server. And then specifically for Fully at Home, they use uh, the completed data to run more and more detailed and accurate simulations about diseases and everything mm -hmm. so this uh so folding at home does protein folding so you're running basically these micro simula parts of this uh simulation about um you know how a protein reacts in a certain way or whatever uh for a various disease so like the thing that causes alzheimer's the thing that causes uh the big thing now is corona right you know it's such right. a big thing for folding at home to be doing uh corona simulations and so yeah you send the data back the researcher is able to use that data in order to um you know, in order to better develop a cure vaccine for the virus and everything. There's been quite a bit of scientific papers published as a direct result of folding at home, both on, both on the computational side as well as in the biology side, you know, based on the data received from folding at home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they've mm -hmm. had this really huge, big PR push and everything, which is, you know, good for them and everything. And they've just completely skyrocketed in user base and active computing power and everything. Um, so IBM Summit the uh, largest public super, the most powerful public supercomputer that's like known uh, to the public obviously um, is only working at um, one and a half I'm sorry is at working at 150 petaflops but then the combined power of folding at home which is everyone contributing a little bit um, has reached uh, one and a half um, exaflops which is t about 10 times larger so nice. yeah. crunching some serious numbers everyone is um so, yeah. Um, anyway, it looks like there are 4.6 million CPU cores running workloads and 435,000 uh, graphics cards processing stuff for the Folding at Home project. And the servers are sending out nearly 115,000 work units an hour. So, yeah. Just a quick shout out. They keep doing good work and they're going to keep doing good work. And if you want to help fight the virus but you're stuck at home and don't have a medical degree, then go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> Maybe do this and spare uh, some compute cycles to uh, protein folding. Uh, as, it's quite, yeah. it's quite good as well. Like if you're, I can like you can. Mine's running at the moment. You can manually set like if you want your CPU to run or your GPU to run. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It only uses the power that you are not using. So like, God, that's probably not a good idea to so use this while you're gaming. But right. you can game while it's running. Like you can play sure. Minecraft. You can play like lesser. Some low impact. Yeah, games. very very low impact. Like, not Rainbow Six um, or Modern Warfare, but Minecraft, as yeah. Anthony said, yeah. And, like, I was, I had mine running while the episode of the podcast episode was, like, uh, exporting the uh, yeah, day before yesterday. And, like, the, that was using the CPU and my GPU, so they were both running at the same time. <laughs> and, you know, you can crank out, I crank out, like, three or four projects a day, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has been quite popular the past couple of days, so it's been a little hard to get projects, but they automatically get assigned to you. Mm -hmm. And like, even if you're not using your PC, it just picks it up automatically and then starts, you know, throttling to get up to speed to process it. So yeah, yeah. quite a good, quite a good software. I'd recommend picking it up 100%. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you want a little bit more of a primer on it, go uh, read the article that I linked in the Twitch chat about it or go to culturegaming.com and search for my article regarding fully at home uh so uh the next little info is uh amd who is you know do powering the graphics of the next gen consoles as well as obviously has more oh, graphics yeah. cards in the pipeline for the pc space um had their source code leaked and this source code is the source code for both next gen consoles and the next uh, uh navi architecture which is like their next graphics architecture so nice. yeah the source code is known internally as arden and it appeared online on github and is wanting a hundred million dollar in ransom Oof. yeah dang <laughs> i'm a big fan of this uh image that the uh... Tom's hardware to use. Yeah, the guy like <laughs> uh, has the little like cutout letters from like magazines yeah. and is like gluing them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can't do a, a can't do a handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, to think they actually staged it, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <coughs> so yeah, I mean, um, 
Yeah, AMD posted a press release to its website today announcing that it had been found stolen graphics IP posted online, followed quickly by news from Torrent Freak that the information pertains to source code for big Navi and Arden GPUs. Torrent Freak claims to have contacted the hacker responsible, who claims the information is worth a hundred million dollars and is seeking bidders. Uh, the hacker, uh, she, it's a she by the way, has posted it to um, GitHub, which is like this big open source. Um, you know, like open source project um, code sharing site and everything. If you use Linux, mm-hmm. you probably go to GitHub on a daily basis. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. um, AMD has apparently filed at least two DMCA notices, you know, like the copyright takedowns to mm-hmm. GitHub. Um, and so... Okay, it's popping yeah. up. Huh? So it seems le- like legit. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, GitHub has since removed the repositories following the DMCA takedowns, but there are other sources, including... A post on 4chan, of course, hosting the leaked information. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, again, you know, it's like uh, she says she'll go away, um, and she gets a hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's gonna get that money. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Actually, they might not. Okay. That, not a hundred million. So, a lot of co- like I was just reading the. Um... Tom's, hard, Tom's hardware article, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the comments are like, "What's the significance of this? What does this even mean?" So answer those if you will, Taylor. Okay. Like, what's the big so, deal about this? To like you and me, it, to like the average consumer, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot or whatever. The worst thing that probably happens to um, people not involved in the industry is mm-hmm. um, like is basically. Like, okay, we can't really do much of anything right this. Maybe at worst you can wipe the architecture from a GPU and use this on it or whatever, trying to get it working, maybe sure. tool around a little bit. What this really is a problem is that now AMD's competitors would have access to AMD's oh. internal corporate secret like source code sort of thing that they lock under like NDA and non-competes with their engineers and everything, right? So it's like if you're Intel or NVIDIA looking at this, uh, hey, G-Man Films in the chat. If you're Intel or NVIDIA looking at this, it's like you now know exactly how your competitors' graphics work and everything, sure. right? So it's like you can do any which way of that. Uh, you can, um, you know, you can like say, oh, th- they've always handled this part better. How, oh, how do they do this part? Oh, let's do that. I understand that now mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Or you can, you know, even do like directly counter it. You know, maybe so it's like um, you can see what upcoming features this architecture would have supported. And it's like if you weren't planning on doing it, oh, well, to make ourselves more competitive, competitive, let's add these features in also. So we're directly competing with them even better. So, yeah, it's a little bit more of the corporate intrigue world as opposed to just like consumer world that would be affected by this. And, you know, honestly, Intel, um, NVIDIA, maybe might start coming to the hacker with a pretty hefty price tag for this kind of information you know buy it off them it's possible yeah yeah so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah unfortunately I can't, really, <laughs> I can't really comment because i don't really uh that's i mean there's nothing really to comment on i guess <laughs> okay i wouldn't know like we wouldn't know how much is like this doesn't have a monetary yeah. value, right? So like, right, exactly. It's like how much does AMD yeah. value their internal secrets, right? Or you know, their trade right. secrets. So, uh, they want to AMD... get on this yeah. pretty quick if they want to stop it from getting leaked. Around. Yeah. AMD um, did uh, in their press release did say, "quote At AMD, data security and the protection of our intellectual property are a priority." In December 2019, we were contacted by someone who claimed to have tested files related to a subset of our current and future graphics products, some of which were recently posted online but have since been taken down. While we are aware the perpetrator has additional files that have not been made public, we believe the stolen graphics IP is not core to the competitiveness or security of our graphics products. We are not aware of the perpetrator possessing any other AMD IP. We are working closely with law enforcement officials and other experts as a part of an ongoing criminal investigation. So that's AMD's yeah, response. Taking it serious. So. Yeah. They don't seem to think anything too important was stolen, but still, you don't want your IP out in public yeah. either. Sure, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of that story. And then, finally, uh, last week, we talked about the possibility of Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. Um, this popped up on the uh, 2019 Modern Warfare subreddit r slash Modern Warfare. 
someone, a uh, user, Reddit user, uh, Mr. Earthbound Fan, claims to have found uh, this. Uh, I'll post the image link here. Um, copy the image address. This sort of like cover image, like this title image for uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered. Found in the files for Modern Warfare 2019. So, hmm. hmm. Whether or sure. not this is true is kind of up for debate. I will say that if the image is faked, it is a really, really good fake. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, uh, it looks pretty legit, to be honest. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's... As I said, if it's a fake, it is a really good fake. Uh, people are people in Reddit are just kind of like uh, you know joking like no wonder the game's so stupidly huge it's actually two in one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, That's probably true. So I'd yeah, this say... would this would match up with the rumors that we talked about last week how Modern Warfare Two Remastered would probably not have the multiplayer but would be a single player right. experience. So, do mm. we think? Like with um, Modern Warfare 2019, do we think they might launch this like off the same kind of like with Warzone, off the same launcher? I wouldn't be surprised, probably. Maybe. Modern Warfare. Maybe. So like you would have to buy, still buy Modern Warfare to play Modern Warfare 2. Um, hmm. Hmm. it's possible. I don't know. Hmm. Because it just seems that'd be weird to be like, oh, and here's the two campaign, like on the same like level as everything else i don't know it seems a little odd yeah i guess when you kick maybe if you click campaign or something there'd be another drop down after that uh -huh. but like could do I, like I, a master chief collection kind of thing like hmm. modern warfare collection you know 20 years modern warfare 1 to 2019 yeah i, I guess this was probably being a separate download and if you have water, modern warfare already they'll probably just give it to you sure okay. Or like maybe you get a small amount of monies. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Uh, people sure. are asking for like, where is it in the files? The original poster, Mr. Earthbrand fan says, it's loaded in memory, labeled as UI underscore loot underscore special underscore Modern Warfare 2 remastered. So. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So it, well, this could like tie in with rumors that... um. You know, another Call of Duty games in the works and blah, blah, blah. Like what we discussed a couple mm -hmm. of months back now. Um, we are talking about whether it would be Black Ops 5 or 6 or whatever, but 5 now. Uh, whether it would be Black Ops 5 or like Ghosts or whatever. So this could be what they're actually working on instead. Yeah. yeah. And I know Season 3 of their thing. Season 2 or Season 3? It's is... Season 2 still. So season three then is happening in like I don't know a couple a week or so. Yeah, uh, like twelve days or so I think. Yeah, it's not too long. Yeah, it's like a little over a week, a week and a half or so. So yeah. interesting. It's potential that like when that launches, they'll make it like Modern Warfare two based or something. Right. Because like Warzone oh, yeah. was their big um, update for season two, like their big thing for season yeah. two. So maybe maybe this will be their big thing for season three. You know, this would be yeah, definitely the most content heavy COD in a while if this was added to it. So yeah, it's good. It's great. It's yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. They just had a new map go up a couple of days ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's already up, is it? Yeah, yeah it is. I played it. I, I played it yesterday. Sure. Not, not my favorite, but it's cool. They're still adding stuff to it. Right. Sure. That's... So, yeah, I don't know. I'd be excited. To, even if it is just a campaign and there's no multiplayer, I'd still be excited to play uh, the Modern Warfare 2 campaign again. It's always a fun time. Yeah. Especially if it looked and sounded like the 2019 version. Oh, yeah. That'd be insane, right? Yeah. Hmm. Like, and felt like that the. the, the more recent stuff mm -hmm. uh, that'd be real cool but who knows okay so yeah that'll about wrap it up for my stuff so anthony what uh what games are coming out this next week uh so on march the 30th mm -hmm. we have mountain blade 2 mount and blade 2 not mountain blade sure uh banner lord is coming to steam early access when it's on PC on March the 30th. Mm -hmm. Persona 5 Royale is going to PS4 on March the 31st. Sweet. The Zombie Army Trilogy is going to Switch on March the 31st as well. Uh, Bubble Bobble Friends 4, game of the year right there, uh, is going to Switch on March 31st in North America. The Complex is going to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on March the 31st as well. Mm -hmm. Good Company is going to Steam Early Access on March 31st. 
end zone a world apart is also going to stimulate access on april 2nd resident evil 3 remaster remake whatever you want to call it is going to pc xbox one and ps4 on april 3rd and lastly for this upcoming week in other waters is going to be pc and switch on april 3rd as well and that is it for this week we have a couple of pretty large uh games coming next week as well so that'll be interesting to get through yeah we're starting to into the season just the season right yep. <laughs> okay should be fine Early year. still a pretty slow gaming year um man you like, keep saying that but like okay so okay so yes we have some big titles coming out but a lot like compared to last year there were like twice as many games coming out a month yeah. that makes sense because like this is this this is the year what the new ones are supposed to come out right and the new the new consoles yeah so like last I mean, year true, was kind of like true, the true. big yeah, like send off year yeah, right. and then this is kind of the year it tapers a little bit in transition. The last, the last sense. bid push for the next gen, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true. Okay. Anyway, so well, uh, Andrew, where can the dead people find you on Twitter? Yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter, Instagram at Durrani, D-R-N-S-K-I. Um, trying to be more more active over there, so give me a follow. I'll make sure to post a little bit more. Also going to be streaming hopefully soon. I'm trying to figure out a schedule there a little bit more. Nice. So okay. Keep an eye there. Anthony? Uh, I am at SoMatMan19. I don't tweet, um, but I do do all the sites, social media stuff. Uh, I'm currently working on a video for YouTube. Oh, boy. Um, I'm kind of going to do... Oh, boy. Uh, kind of going to do a bit of, like, convert some articles to video format. Okay. Um, just to talk about them a little bit. Uh, to kind of give our content a little bit more exposure. Um, so this video is going to be talking about like basically what coronavirus is doing to the gaming industry, how it could delay some stuff. Mm. Um, so stay tuned for that. That will be posted probably within the next couple of days. I've done a lot of voiceover work for it, so I just need to get some graphics done and then chuck it up. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Mm. You can find me at Infurious7809. That is at I-N-F-E-R-I-U-S 7809 on Twitter. Tweet about all sorts of different stuff. Have been super active on Twitter lately. Just haven't had time to, you know, refresh the timeline and read all the way through lately. But, cool. yeah. Anyway, hopefully once moving calms down and whatnot, be back more <laughs> on it. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that'll about wrap up the podcast for this week. So tune in next time. Uh, <laughs> same time, same place. Stay healthy. And uh, play, stay inside, play some video stay games. Stay inside, stay exactly. home. Yeah. That's a good point. Anyway, thank you all <laughs> so much for watching, and we will see you all next week. Bye bye. Outro is rolling.